Well, at least they ended the night with best picture. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the results of last night's 94th Academy Awards and comparing the actual winners to my picks and predictions. If you haven't already watched my Oscar prediction video, you could check it out here to see not only my personal picks and predictions for all 23 categories, but also my reasoning for those predictions. In this video, we're going to go through all 23 of those categories, and for each, I'm going to tell you the nominees, remind you of my personal pick, recap who I thought would win, and then briefly talk about the actual winner. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. Remember, these are just my thoughts, so be sure to post your own personal thoughts on the 2022 Oscars in the comments below. I've already reviewed some of these movies on this channel, so if you want to check those out for some more in-depth thoughts on each of them, I'll put links in the description below, and I'll also link some of them up in the cards as we go along. I'll be going through these in the order in which they were presented, or technically aired for at least eight of the categories, but I'll put timestamps in the description to make it a little bit easier to navigate. Alright, let's talk about these results. Actress in a supporting role. The nominees were Jessie Buckley in The Lost Daughter, Ariana DeBose in West Side Story, Judi Dench in Belfast, Kirsten Dunst in The Power of the Dog, and Ingenue Ellis in King Richard. My personal pick was Ariana DeBose, and I also thought she would actually win. And the Oscar went to Ariana DeBose. So started off the night with a correct pick and prediction, but really this one was not a surprise at all, and one of the few categories that I felt the most confident about. I love Ingenue Ellis' performance too, but DeBose was the standout nominee and one of the best parts of West Side Story. She also gave one of the best acceptance speeches of the night. Sound. The nominees were Belfast, Dune, No Time to Die, The Power of the Dog, and West Side Story. My personal pick was No Time to Die, but I thought Dune would actually win. And the Oscar went to Dune. So not too surprising here. It wasn't my personal choice, as you can see, but I do think it was definitely a deserved win. Dune as a film and as a book is really not my cup of tea. However, it was definitely impressive from a technical standpoint. So I was expecting it to really clean up in the technical categories. Of course, quite a few of these technical categories were cut from the live presentation in this year's Oscars, including sound. They still aired the award presentation, and I believe shortened versions of acceptance speeches, but it was all pre-recorded, which I think was not only a mistake, but also just extremely disrespectful of the nominees. Cinematography. The nominees were Dune, Nightmare Alley, The Power of the Dog, The Tragedy of Macbeth, and West Side Story. My personal pick was Nightmare Alley, but I thought Dune would actually win, and the Oscar went to... Dune. Another technical category, another win for Dune. At least this one was aired live. Although Dune wasn't my personal pick here, it was my prediction, and again, I believe it was a fairly deserved win. This movie just had a completely different scope and scale than any of its fellow nominees. There was a grandiosity to its huge planetary landscapes that was just hard to compete with, mostly because how do you compare something that big and epic with the much smaller scale subtleties of these other nominees? Documentary Short Subject. The nominees were Audible, Lead Me Home, The Queen of Basketball, Three Songs for Benazir, and When We Were Bullies. My personal pick was Audible, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to The Queen of Basketball. My first wrong pick of the night, and it was actually a double miss for me. That said, I'm not surprised by this win at all. It was my second favorite of the set, and my second choice for prediction, but I was going back and forth between the two for quite a while before finally settling on Audible. I still think Audible was the thematically stronger film, but I'm still happy with this one and glad that we all now know Lucy Harris's legacy and the impact that she had on women's basketball. Now, if only the Academy had presented this award live. Visual Effects. The nominees were Dune, Free Guy, No Time to Die, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and Spider-Man No Way Home. 
My personal pick was No Time to Die, but I thought Dune would actually win. And the Oscar went to... Dune. I realize I'm starting to sound like a broken record here with all these Dune technical categories, but once again, not much of a surprise here. Like I said with cinematography, this film had a level of grandiosity that far exceeded everything else on this list, which I think helped to cement its win. I know that there were a lot of people pulling for Spider-Man here, and it certainly got a pretty big cheer at the Dolby Theater, but the Academy voters tend to steer clear of comic book movies in this category. Spider-Man 2 was the last to succeed at that, and it seems like it's going to retain that honor for at least one more year. Animated Feature Film The nominees were Encanto, Flea, Luca, The Mitchells vs. the Machines, and Raya and the Last Dragon. My personal pick was The Mitchells vs. the Machines, but I thought Encanto would actually win. And the Oscar went to Encanto. We don't talk about Bruno, but we certainly talk about Encanto a lot. Even though this was probably actually my least favorite of the nominees here, don't get all up in arms, I still did like it, I did predict that it would win mostly because of how enormous it's gotten after its Disney Plus drop, and how embedded in current pop culture it is. It's Disney, which obviously has a proven track record in this category, and it was also the only musical of the five nominees, which I think helped it a lot, because it provided a secondary medium for the film to stay in people's minds. So I get it, I predicted it, but I really wanted The Mitchells vs. the Machines to win here, so this ended up being the second most disappointing category of the night for me. Animated Short Film The nominees were Affairs of the Art, Bestia, Box Ballet, Robin Robin, and The Windshield Wiper. My personal pick was Robin Robin, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to The Windshield Wiper. Uh, what? <laughs> this was easily the most surprising win of the night for me. I'm not really sure you could classify it as an upset, since the shorts categories don't really have any pre-Oscar predictive buzz based on other award ceremonies, but I did not expect this at all. This was a really rough year for the animated shorts category, but I'm stunned. I really did not think that anything besides Robin Robin even had a chance. I liked the animation of The Windshield Wiper, but the esoteric, plotless, philosophical visual rambling was not for me. But apparently it was for the Academy voters. However, not enough for them to air the category live. Actor in a Supporting Role The nominees were Kieran Hines in Belfast, Troy Coetzer in Coda, Jesse Plemons in The Power of the Dog, J.K. Simmons in Being the Ricardos, and Cody Smith-McPhee in The Power of the Dog. My personal pick was Troy Coetzer, and I also thought he would actually win. And the Oscar went to Troy Coetzer in CODA. I am so, so happy that he won this. Much like the Supporting Actress category, I don't think this was much of a surprise, but I was still holding my breath as that envelope was opened. This was very deserved, and certainly one of the most impactful wins of the night. Troy is now only the second ever Deaf Oscar winner, following his CODA co-star Marlene Matlin, who won the first back in 1987. But this was a significant win, and I don't think it will take another 35 years for our third win. International Feature Film The nominees were Drive My Car for Japan, Flea for Denmark, The Hand of God for Italy, Lunana, a yak in the classroom for Bhutan, and the worst person in the world for Norway. My personal pick was the worst person in the world, but I thought Drive My Car would actually win. And the Oscar went to Drive My Car. Of all the categories this year, this one was one of the most baffling to me when it came to the nominees. I was surprised by some of the picks, and very disappointed by some of the omissions. Drive My Car was not my personal favorite of the bunch, but it was basically a lock for this category, so not a surprise here at all. This was a category that was presented live, but I should note that this category featured one of the most frustrating moments of an altogether rough show, because they repeatedly cut off Hamaguchi with the music during his acceptance speech. They cued the music after like 20 seconds. He had one of the shortest speeches of the night and was still, for some reason, literally ushered off stage with the music playing. Live Action Short Film The nominees were Alakashu, Take and Run, The Dress, The Long Goodbye, On My Mind, 
and Please Hold. My personal pick was Please Hold, but I thought The Long Goodbye would actually win. And the Oscar went to The Long Goodbye. I felt reasonably confident that this short was gonna win, because it had the star power behind it and the extremely prominent in-your-face thematic messaging, but I still thought there might have been a chance for Please Hold to come through and surprise us. But no surprise here, apparently that was only reserved for the animated shorts this year. As with the other two shorts categories, this was one of the eight categories not presented live, which, as you could probably tell by my repetition, is still very frustrating to me. Costume design. The nominees were Cruella, Cyrano, Dune, Nightmare Alley, and West Side Story. My personal pick was Cruella, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to Cruella. Even though this one was basically a lock, people had me a little nervous about this in the last couple days, so I was relieved to hear them call Cruella. It seemed like a no-brainer for me. I mean, the film is literally about fashion design and features some spectacularly memorable costumes. Also, this avenges 102 Dalmatians loss in the category, finally earning the 101 Dalmatians franchise that Oscar. Original screenplay. The nominees were Belfast, don't Look Up, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, and The Worst Person in the World. My personal pick was Belfast, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to Belfast. So this one seemed pretty obvious to me, but I got the sense from people over the last week or so that some of the other nominees had a lot of support. It was a moderately competitive category, but Branna just came out on top here with his very personal story, which I think helped cement the win. Adapted Screenplay. The nominees were Coda, Drive My Car, Dune, The Lost Daughter, and The Power of the Dog. My personal pick was Coda, but I thought The Power of the Dog would actually win. And the Oscar went to Coda. So we are 13 categories in, and this was the first category of the night where my personal pick won, but it was not my prediction. I thought the power of the dog just had too much power and support behind it, but even though my prediction was wrong here, I'm so happy. I definitely thought Coda had the best screenplay of these nominees, and it was very exciting to see it get its second win of the night. Original score. The nominees were Don't Look Up, Dune, Encanto, Parallel Mothers, and The Power of the Dog. My personal pick was Don't Look Up, but I thought Dune would actually win. And the Oscar went to Dune. All right, bringing back that Dune broken record here to say that this was not a particularly surprising win. Although I wish other films were nominated in the category, like Raya and The Last Dragon, I did think that all of these nominees had scores that were very fitting for their respective movies. But Dune just had the most classically cinematic sounding score of them all. Despite being nominated 12 times, this was actually only Hans Zimmer's second win, coming nearly three decades after his win for The Lion King. It's too bad that the Academy didn't think this award was important enough to present live. Film editing. The nominees were Don't Look Up, Dune, King Richard, The Power of the Dog, and Tick Tick Boom. My personal pick was Tick Tick Boom, but I thought Dune would actually win. And the Oscar went to Dune. I know that this was my predicted pick, but I think this was probably the least deserved win of the night for Dune. It's not that the editing was bad or anything, it's just that some of the other nominees made much better use of their editing, either for propelling the story or for capturing a certain mood. Though, to be completely honest, I thought that this category featured a weird set of nominees to begin with, and there were some very obvious omissions, like Last Night in Soho. Maybe that's why the Academy made the asinine decision not to present the category live. Documentary Feature. The nominees were Ascension, Attica, Flea, Summer of Soul, or When the Revolution Could Not Be Televised, and Writing with Fire. My personal pick was Attica, but I thought Flea would actually win. And the Oscar went to Summer of Soul, or When the Revolution Could Not Be Televised. This may have been a double miss for me, but I'm not at all surprised, nor am I unhappy about this pick. I thought Flea was going to get the edge just because it had no shot in its other two categories, but Summer of Soul was a great documentary, blending music documentary with very important historical context. 
This category was presented live, but that might have been a bit unfortunate in this case, because I think the award here was overshadowed by the altercation that occurred between Will Smith and Chris Rock immediately before. Production Design The nominees were Dune, Nightmare Alley, The Power of the Dog, The Tragedy of Macbeth, and West Side Story. My personal pick was Nightmare Alley, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to Dune. Ugh, another double miss for me. It's a technical category, so I know I probably should have gone with Dune, but I just really thought that the production design for Nightmare Alley helped to establish the atmosphere in that film, in a way that none of the other nominees did. That said, I did think that this category was probably the biggest toss-up of them all, and I suppose Dune benefited a bit from essentially crafting a completely fictional set of worlds. Though apparently that wasn't impressive enough for the Academy, since they neglected to present the category live. Original Song The nominees were Be Alive from King Richard, Dos Oruguitas from Encanto, Down to Joy from Belfast, no Time to Die from No Time to Die, and Somehow You Do from Four Good Days. My personal pick was No Time to Die, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to No Time to Die. No surprise here for me. Even though it's far from my favorite Bond song, it's just tough to compete with a Bond theme song. Disney could have had they submitted the right song from Encanto, but Dos Oreguitas just was not gonna cut it. And you could tell that they were kicking themselves for that submission, especially when We Don't Talk About Bruno was performed live, unlike eight Oscar categories, despite not even being a nominated song. Directing. The nominees were Kenneth Branagh for Belfast, Ryusuke Hamaguchi for Drive My Car, Paul Thomas Anderson for Licorice Pizza, Jane Campion for The Power of the Dog, and Steven Spielberg for West Side Story. My personal pick was Kenneth Branagh for Belfast, but I thought Jane Campion and The Power of the Dog would actually win. And the Oscar went to Jane Campion for The Power of the Dog. Not too surprising here, though I've gotta say it's crazy that we went 19 categories before a win for The Power of the Dog. I thought it was gonna be the number two film behind Dune this year in terms of wins. Anyway, it wasn't my personal pick, but I'm not unhappy with it, because Jane Campion is now our third ever woman to win Best Director. And this is the first time we've had women win in the category in consecutive years. Also, I gotta give a quick shout out to Kevin Costner, who delivered the most memorable and impassioned monologue of the night while introducing this category. Actor in a leading role. The nominees were Javier Bardem in Being the Ricardos, Benedict Cumberbatch in The Power of the Dog, Andrew Garfield in Tick Tick Boom, Will Smith in King Richard, and Denzel Washington in The Tragedy of Macbeth. My personal pick was Will Smith, and I also thought he would actually win. And the Oscar went to Will Smith in King Richard. I thought that a few of these nominees had a shot, but Will Smith was definitely the strongest of the bunch for me, so I'm really glad that he got it. He's been nominated a few times before, but this was his first win. It's just unfortunate that the events earlier in the night kind of tainted the moment a bit. More than a bit. Yeah. That slap is probably going to be remembered more than the win, but his performance in the movie was definitely deserving of the Oscar. Makeup and hairstyling. The nominees were Coming to America, Cruella, Dune, The Eyes of Tammy Faye, and House of Gucci. My personal pick was Cruella, and I also thought it would actually win. And the Oscar went to The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Okay, another double miss for me, but not surprising here. I knew that Cruella was a long shot and that Tammy Faye was definitely the safer choice, but I stuck with my gut and lost because of it. But The Eyes of Tammy Faye was more than deserving of this Oscar. The makeup here was pretty transformative, and a big part of what made this movie work. This was the eighth and final pre-recorded category of the night, and I thought they were going to skip it all together. They put makeup and hairstyling as one of the final three categories of the night. It came after lead actor, and it wasn't even presented live. Let's just say that I'm not going to be surprised if in the next few days it comes out that the Academy forgot to edit it into the broadcast, caught on at the last minute, and just threw it in between two of the biggest categories of the night. Actress in a leading role. The nominees were 
Jessica Chastain in The Eyes of Tammy Faye, Olivia Coleman in The Lost Daughter, Penelope Cruz in Parallel Mothers, Nicole Kidman in Being the Ricardos, and Kristen Stewart in Spencer. My personal pick was Kristen Stewart, and I also thought she would actually win. And the Oscar went to Jessica Chastain in The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Another double miss here for me, but another one that I'm not particularly surprised by. Chastain was probably the obvious choice, and certainly the safer choice here. And I do think she did a great job. Well deserved, and I'm really happy that she got her first Oscar. I thought this was actually a really solid set of nominees, basically across the board. But not gonna lie, I was really hoping for a Kristen Stewart win. That performance was just something else. And even though I love Jessica Chastain, this was probably the most disappointing win of the night for me, even more so than an animated feature. Best Picture. The nominees were Belfast, Coda, Don't Look Up, Drive My Car, Dune, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, Nightmare Alley, The Power of the Dog, and West Side Story. My personal pick was Coda, but I thought The Power of the Dog would actually win. And the Oscar went to Coda. Oh man, I know I didn't pick it for my prediction, but I am so, so happy that Coda won. I know I was gaining a lot of momentum in these last couple of weeks, but I didn't think it was gonna be enough to overtake The Power of the Dog, but it did. This was one of my favorite movies of last year, and it was the only Best Picture nominee that I loved. Coda ended up taking all three categories it was nominated in, and made Oscar history in a number of different ways. All right, so there you have it, my reaction to the results of the 94th Academy Awards. I correctly predicted 15 out of 23 winners, and eight of my 23 personal picks actually won. Combined, I correctly picked or predicted 17 of 23. So pretty decent on the prediction side, not so much on the personal pick side. A lot of my picks were a little unconventional, so I can't say I'm too surprised there. Compared to last year, I got two more correct predictions this time around, 15 instead of 13, which is actually a new record for me. I did quite a bit worse with my personal picks, getting a measly 8 compared to last year's 11, and I did a tiny bit better with my combo picks, getting 17 this year rather than 15. And that increase of 2 is thanks exclusively to Coda, which won the only two categories in the night that I incorrectly predicted but correctly wanted. So overall, I'd say this was an improvement for me over last year, however, I clearly don't personally agree with Academy voters all that much. So, how did you do with your predictions? I'd love to see your thoughts on the Oscar results and also your prediction percentage, so be sure to post them in the comments below. Remember, I've already reviewed some of these movies, so I put links to those videos in the description below, and you could check those out if you want some more in-depth thoughts on each of them, as well as my ratings, pros and cons, and even tailored film recommendations. And if you're interested in buying any of these Oscar-nominated or winning movies, I do have affiliate links to all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. Alright, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this, as well as movie reviews. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with mainly movies, the way life should be.